The existence of Teen Titans Go to the Movies has proven that the Teen Titans reboot is an actually popular and profitable show, despite all the backlash from fans of the original series. As a big fan of Robin, I plan on seeing the surprisingly critically liked film the day it comes out. In preparation, I hesitantly decided to watch a few episodes of the show to get a bearing of what I was about to get myself into. And, to my surprise, I actually found myself being entertained by the kids' show. It was funny, engaging, and an easy watch. As a result, I think most of the issues people have with the show stems from the fact that it's being made for a younger audience than the original was. It is much simpler and shorter, but that better fits the younger audience. But this also raises a different, less addressed problem with the show. It's ignorance of the impression it can leave on a kid. Take, for example, the episode titled Super Robin. Robin is frustrated that he doesn't have a kind of power like everyone else in Teen Titans and begins to try to get a power. After a failed and slightly terrifying attempt to merge DNA with an actual Robin, Raven decides to magically give him powers to show him that they are really a burden. Gifted with these new powers for all of 10 seconds, Robin rids the world of crime and hunger. Because of this, the Teen Titans are out of a job and are forced to find other work. Robin gets a nondescript job at an office, and years go by until he's an elderly man who falls and goes to the hospital. Then this happens. Where did I lose my purpose? Oh, it was when I got my powers. <laughs> they were right. These powers were a curse. In your face, Robin! Ha <laughs> ha! Vindication! Uh-huh, that's right. Superpowers are curse, 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 See? Told you so. Curse. I did not edit that. Robin just died in the next episode where everything is back to normal and plays. What's the lesson? You don't want to be a superhero, kids, because you may be too good at it and solve too many problems. Not only that, but the writers didn't even bother to reset the episode to ensure that there is some kind of continuity. This happens many more times, including in the very next episode, where, long story short, everyone is turned into an electronic when Cyborg went evil. Then the episode ends. Not only is this lazy, but this could leave a negative impression on a kid. They could be left feeling scared for the character's fate or believe that some situations just cannot be overcome. But this is even the real horror. The real horror is very well showcased in the episode Meatball Party. Cyborg is having a meatball party where everyone is excited to participate except Raven. She tries to get out of it, but the Titans keep pestering her until she eats a meatball. A bunch of weird, unrelated things happen, then Raven finally tells Cyborg that she doesn't want to always be a part of Cyborg's plans, and this scene ensues. Look, Raven, I'm sorry. Just because I enjoy something doesn't mean I need to force it on everyone else. I won't ever do that again. Promise. Promise. Are the writers really going to use their influence to teach a lesson to their audience? Meatball party! Sorry, Raven. I just can't help myself. If me is a ball, you can eat it! You can eat it all! Oh, wait, never mind. Apparently Cyborg's action is excused just because he says he can't help it. Within seconds, the writers just undermine their whole message. Okay, well, maybe that's just an outlier. How about the episode simply titled Books? It starts with everyone being bored except Raven, who's reading a book. Raven suggests that everyone else tries reading a book. Hesitantly, everyone starts, then falls in love with reading because of how much it stimulates their imagination. This part gets a little weird because they start to draw parallels between how much they love reading to drug addiction. Don't you understand, girl? We got the need. The need to read! You gotta get us more books, man! You can't start us reading and then cut us off! Reading is fundamental! <laughs> anyway, there are a lot of books to read, and apparently reading each other's is gross, so they go on a hunt throughout the tower for more. Beast Boy eventually finds one buried in the yard, only as a magical book Raven hid because it brings your imagination to life. They all start reading, and the character from their original book, Evil Now, starts to attack them. Raven says that the only way to stop the characters is to turn their imaginations off, effectively making reading boring. To do so, they each say, in turn, something that makes their book far-fetched and ultimately stupid. Bro! The 
Brooke characters die, and the episode finishes with this. It's over. I'm going to destroy this book so it can never hurt anyone again. You should have warned us. Reading isn't just fundamental. It's dangerous. We almost died because of books, Rave. I hope this doesn't do anything to diminish your love of reading. This episode teaches children that reading and imagination is dangerous, and that the heroes they look up to don't like reading either. Teen Titans Go! is Cartoon Network's second most popular show, with each new episode drawing in an average of 1,221,000 viewers. With this many kids that they have the power to positively influence, the writers instead regularly communicate half-formulated, never-fully-executed themes. It really wouldn't be that hard to change the book's episode so that it encourages reading, just have them defeat a bad guy with the knowledge they received from reading their books. Or if that's too much expository work, just have Raven cast a spell that causes their imaginations to come to life and help them defeat the bad guy. There's one main issue that is contributing to these nonsense endings. The need for a joke. Teen Titans Go! is a comedy and it won't stray that path. Every episode must end on a punchline of some sort, like then he died, or then he shot meatballs at her face. If they were okay with ending on a less dramatic note, many of the endings would be solved already. In Super Robin, Raven could prove her point, then bring them all back to the present, leaving Robin glad he doesn't have powers. In Meatball Party, Cyborg would promise never to force Raven to participate in something she doesn't want to, then they could hug or just end it there. In books, the Titans could say that despite the fact that imaginations can be dangerous, reading is still super enjoyable and they will continue to do so. One last laugh shouldn't be worth sacrificing the message the story is conveying. Teen Titans Go! is an ultimately good show, as it entertains, and fulfilling this is the basic requirement of any show. It will no doubt continue to be compared to the original and lose to it the majority of the time. People can argue that the characters are one-dimensional, the animation is simplistic, and the plot is non-existent, but I think the only real horror of Teen Titans Go! is how it's using its influence. Your parents! They're here, man! Well, where are they? They are just on the other side of the door. Mommy! Daddy! Your baby is coming! Ah! Get this off me! No! April Fool's! <laughs> you sure did get me. You sure did. <laughs>